usually what's listed on the left hand part is the propositions that the operator is going to be applied to. So in relation to the unary operator not, it acts on a single proposition, so let's call this proposition P. Now, what we list down under this particular proposition is all the truth values that it can actually take on at any particular moment in time. So, a proposition P could be any proposition, it could be it is raining, I have an umbrella, it could be anything at all, okay, but it has to be a proposition. Some proposition P can either be false or it can be true. Okay? They're the possible states that the proposition P could be in at any moment in time. It can't be both, it can only be one, that's part of the definition of a proposition. And the not operator, okay, the not P, okay, well, the result of a not P, that's how we read this, not P, or the negation of P, is dependent on the state that the original proposition is in. So, for example, if the original proposition P is actually false, okay, well, then not P must be true, okay? If the original proposition is true, well then not p must be false. Okay, So this is the way that this particular operator, this exclamation mark, that's a symbol for it, Okay, but this particular concept as, as an inver a, a negation or a not, this is the way it works. The output of a not on a proposition is dependent on the input. Okay? So if the proposition is false, its negation is true. If the proposition is true, its negation is false. Okay. So how does the binary operator or work? Okay. Uh, well, once again, we'll we'll define how it works through a truth table. Okay, something like this. Don't forget the binary uh, or takes two propositions. Let's symbolize them by p, and let's use a q to symbolize the second proposition. The p we say is the left operand. The q is the right operand. Okay. Now, what will the output look like? Well, actually, let's define all the possible states that p along with Q, can be in simultaneously. Well, I suppose both could be initially false. The first one could be false, and the second one true. The first one could be true, and the second one false. And then the next possibility, the only other possibility, is that the first one is true, and the second one is true. So the OR is an operation that's applied to two propositions. So from a syntax perspective, when we OR P and Q, P with Q, the output is P ORed with Q. And the way it works is like this. Okay? Actually, let me give you a little bit of a rhyme. Okay? An OR is only ever false when both are false. Okay? So the OR is only ever false when both inputs are simultaneously false. Okay? And let's think about that here for a moment. Yeah? So say if you say to your mother okay, or your friend yeah, that you're going to watch the football match or you're going swimming. Okay? Uh, and let's say you don't go and watch the football match, so that proposition is false. You don't go swimming, okay? Well then, if you think about it, you've told a lie to your friend, so actually P or Q is false, okay? When you say that you're, if you say to your friends that you're going to watch the football, or you're going swimming, if you don't go to football, but you do go swimming, okay? Well, you haven't lied to your friend, and you know that naturally works, okay? So you haven't lied, so it must be true. If you say to your friend you're going to watch the football or you're going swimming, and if you do go to watch the football, you don't go swimming, once again you haven't lied to your friend, so it's not false, it must be true. Now, this last one is a little bit unusual. What we're actually defining here is what's known as the inclusive OR. In the real world, when we say that I'm doing A or B, I sort of mean I'm doing one or the other, I'm not doing both. Yeah? But in our situation here, for for air propositional logic that we're building, yeah, okay. At this stage, we're defining what's known as the inclusive OR. So, irrespective of whether I do either, okay, it's true. Okay. So actually, what I said earlier on the rhyme is this: is that an OR of two propositions. Now here, CP is on the left, so it's the left operand. Q is on the right, so it's the right operand. The OR of two propositions is only ever false. Okay. It's only ever false. That's right here. Okay. It's only ever false when both of the operands are simultaneously false. Okay. Now an AND operation, okay, an AND, the AND connective, once again we'll define it using a truth table. Okay. Uh, it takes two propositions, a P, a Q. The states that they could be in are false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. Okay. And the AND, P, 
and Q, okay? Well, like if you say to your to say to your mother or to your friend, I'm going to watch the football and I'm going swimming, okay? In no no particular order, you're 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 giving it there, but you're going to watch the football and you're going swimming. For you not to have told a lie, you must have done both things, okay? So when when I do go to watch the football, I do go swimming. I haven't told a lie. I said I was doing both. I was doing I was going to watch the football and I was going swimming. Okay? Well then the output is true. The all other times for an and the output is false because we have told a lie somewhere. Okay? If that makes sense. Okay. So let's just recap back to the or. An or is only ever false when both of the inputs are simultaneously false. Whereas an and is only ever true when both of the inputs are simultaneously true. And that's the way we can construct these true tables. Okay. Now, the implication is a little bit more tricky to understand. Okay. Now I'll try to 